Hello, my name is Lars Drudegård. I come from the International Center Against Abuse of Covert Technologies, and I'm very honored that I have been given a chance to interview Mr. Barry Trauer, together with my fellow Danish citizen, Mr. Stephen Bell. My pleasure. Maybe you could introduce yourself. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll tell you how I came into this. Uh, in the 1960s, very early 1960s, I trained with the government microwave warfare establishment. I looked at all aspects of microwave warfare. Uh, and when I finished my time in the military, because I had uh, a lot of expertise in the microwave field, I was asked if I would uh, carry on with this research. Uh, and some people blow this out of all proportion. Uh, I was an agent. I don't like the word secret agent because secret agent, when you say secret agent, people think of James Bond, who wasn't a secret agent and he wasn't a spy. James Bond, uh, the fictitious character, is military intelligence. And I wasn't military intelligence. Uh, I was an agent. I collected information secretly uh, and I spent 11 years collecting information from spies who were a very short part, a very small part of my work. Uh, I also questioned uh, international terrorists, international criminals, uh, anybody of immense interest I questioned and I trained for quite a few years to learn how to do this. They found that there was a, an unusual number of breast cancers, childhood leukemias, uh, other cancers, <clears throat> and they couldn't work out why. So they, they changed some of the staff and then they went down with leukemias and cancers. Uh, and again, they changed the staff and then they looked into this and found that they were being microwaved. And this is where the United States became a little bit naughty. They decided to keep this quiet. The Americans used their own people as initial guinea pigs <clears throat> to develop their own weapons. And then uh, when it was discovered what was going on, initially there was a denial that you always get. <clears throat> Then there was a cover-up report uh, and finally um, a very renowned professor, I think he has about 18 professorships, uh, John Goldsmith, he wrote the definitive proper report and found that <clears throat> uh, you know, low-level microwaves were causing a, an enormous amount of cancers and leukemias and ill effects <clears throat> and by then it, everybody was leaping onto the microwaves as stealth weapons and they go from there which was the 50s uh, right up to and including the present day. The ladies were protesting about having American missiles on English soil. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a peaceful protest. All they were doing were camping outside the perimeter of the American base. There was no violence, no swearing, no shouting. It was a peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
it was found that from the American base, the ladies were being microwaved uh, and it was actually measured. They were being microwaved to make them sick. And in fact, when the figures came out, there was a disproportionate amount of tumours, personality changes, suicidal tendencies of the ladies. They were deliberately microwaved uh, by the Americans for protesting about their base. Uh, as, um, uh, you know, with one pulse frequency, you can just make people so suicidal they can't be bothered to act like a demonstrator anymore. All they want to do is sleep or lay in bed all day. So, um, <clears throat> so if you're targeting demonstrators, you, you make them suicidally depressed. Uh, and they, they're not, they don't care about demonstrating anymore because they're too upset. Whereas if you want to cause a specific psychiatric illness, <clears throat> you would have an infrared device that followed the person and you would link it to a, a pencil thin microwave source. So the microwave beam would always target a specific gland or a specific part of the brain or an eye or a heart. Uh, so you, you would have them being targeted they, they can they can cause insanity uh, and it was an experiment one of the experiments was to take an ordinary sane person cause insanity and have a, a psychiatrist who was unknown to everybody diagnose schizophrenia or paranoia or a psychiatric illness that was a successful outcome and the, the person would spend the rest of their life in an asylum in misery but to the government scientist that was a success and was the guinea pig locked up oh yeah 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 i mean humans the difference between humans are like guinea pigs mm. if they want to experiment on you by the thousands they will and you can be driven to insanity and death uh, and you just become a tick in a box without any so much as a, a feeling yeah and this is what they do and this is why they are above the law it wasn't until around the 70s that this became secret uh, for some reason it was talked about openly <clears throat> you know if I'm talking to a spy and I, I want to find out where the spy was trained how the spy was recruited uh, over the five-year period of training and everything that went on it's going to take years and years and years but if you want to talk about microwaves and chips and microwave weapons, they'll just talk about it over a biscuit and a cup of tea. It wasn't secret. Uh, most governments talked openly or people talked openly about it. It wasn't until the 70s, mid 70s, that the, I think the full potential of this globally uh, came into force and the governments decided then to put everything under the official secrets acts but until then uh, nothing was secret it was just talked about openly that's actually very interesting yeah. yeah i mean it just wasn't people didn't know about it it wasn't general knowledge you wouldn't meet somebody in the supermarket and say have you got a chip in but but the people that, that had them knew they had them and they would go around talking about them and yeah, yeah. And other people would talk about them, seriously. Uh, whereby, with the special forces, you could send down, if you had an idea roughly what country they were in, you could send down a beam from a satellite. The, the chip would be switched on by the beam, energised, and would send a signal back. Uh, you've got that, that type of chip. The other type is when it is 
pulsing continuously to stimulate, let's say, a gland in the body uh, at, a, at a set frequency to produce a specific chemical that will produce a specific biochemical response in the brain. So you, you can have one working permanently and you can have them working intermittently and you can have them that will only work if they are stimulated. Yeah, I mean voices are the easiest ones mm -hmm. because all you have to do is stimulate, uh, stimulate the cochlea w with a, a set resonant frequency, it's very easy. Uh, voices are very easy um, and the it isn't people imagining voices they physically hear them they physically hear as I'm talking to you my voice isn't inside your brain my voice goes no further than an inch into your ear no further at all uh, it's the electrical signal that makes you interpret how I sound and once you've got this electrical signal which can be a chip or a, lots of things you can physically make people hear voices certain voices and it can be any conversation um, and it can be anybody you want to hear it can be a soft angelic voice it can be a god uh, it could be something that scares you like a devil, it, it could be anything. Fair enough. So I was there, I went into the back of a big black car and it took me off in the dark and then underneath a huge building in the dark and I, I was suddenly thinking, well hang on, this could be a bullet in the back of the head time, uh, I'm getting uncomfortable here. Uh, but he took me out and took me to a room and he said, I'm an international scientist, he said, and something is really really worrying me uh, and I have to tell somebody who can tell the world. Now I actually knew what he told me I knew was going on anyway because it had been discussed uh, in other countries but um, he said it is now possible to genetically change bacteriums and virus genetically change them. What has been developed now <clears throat> is if bacterium they can lay and, and yeasts they can lay in the soil for hundreds of years in a dormant stage um, and it's known by grave diggers or people who dig up old graves that it's possible when light comes on the bacterium to regenerate the bubonic plague that's been laying in the ground for several hundred years. It only wants that particular frequency and bang, it, it, it's active again. <clears throat> you don't need more than two brain cells to work out where you go from here. Virus are neither dead nor alive they in, inhabit hosts. If I put a virus inside a dormant bacteria that I know I can spring to life, I go to Norway on a holiday or 